All I've learned is that every pregnancy is just so different. I felt icky. How many times did it just move? I could sleep for like 10 hours and wake up tired. There's actually a baby in there and I know. But is now asleep because of how long I've been sitting here. I was all like, oh, this video is gonna be like five minutes. But I was wrong. I filmed almost a good 10 minutes of footage and I realized that I wasn't looking into the camera. So I haven't used this camera in a long time because I normally use my phone and it's much easier to just look at my phone. Oh my God, I'm doing it again. Hey everyone, and welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you're new, my name is Sana. I have a four and a half year old boy and I have a one and a half year old and I am currently pregnant with my third child. So I'm really excited to be filming today, my four to eight week pregnancy update. I actually wanted to film pregnancy updates from my first pregnancy because all I did in my first pregnancy was watch pregnancy updates. And I really wish that more people did earlier pregnancy updates. That's kind of the time where you're going through a lot of symptoms and you don't really know whether they're normal or not. I've had two pregnancies now, one which was super normal and super easy, and one which was just absolutely crazy. And now this one is kind of like crazy but normal. And so all I've learned is that every pregnancy is just so different. This is our first month trying to conceive. And we obviously have done it before, but this was, it was a little bit different this time. And so we both were pretty convinced that we weren't pregnant, that it didn't work this time and we're gonna have to try again. And it's just like, that would be totally fine because we just started. So I found out when I was three weeks and two days, pregnant so we found out really early but I didn't want to tell my husband until the weekend so I would be about four weeks by then oh I think I skipped things this is going to be a fun editing job so week four one of my main symptoms in week four was pretty much cramping I was having major major cramping it was really hurting in my abdomen and kind of my lower abdomen I was worried that there was a big chance of miscarriage and a lot of times they say that like cramping is a sign of miscarriage, but I wasn't having any bleeding. I, I always worry that I'm miscarrying anyways, and so I was all freaked out and I would like constantly check to make sure I wasn't bleeding. I haven't blessed with very good pregnancies where I haven't bled at all, and so I think like as long as you're not bleeding, it's a good sign that things are pretty good. And I think it's just my body was stretching. It was to the point where I like couldn't sleep and so I was having to use a magic bag, a heating pad all the time. And I remember talking to my midwife last year, last pregnancy, not last year, about whether it's okay to use a heating pad or not. And she said, yeah, a heating pad is always fine. I was also having a lot of back pain. I was having a lot of upper back pain. And it was like to the point where I couldn't get out of bed. It was really, really, really painful. And ironically enough, one thing that helped my back pain was walking. It's always been like that in my pregnancies, which doesn't make any sense but I always thought it was because my babies were sitting on like my spinal cord and that's what was causing me the pain, but the baby's too small to do that. So maybe it's just how my body reacts to the hormones or things like that. That was pretty much week four. Week five, I also was really, really emotional. Week five, I was crying over everything. That's actually one of the things that I knew that I was pregnant early on, but week five, I was just like, really upset over everything. I just felt like nobody like understood me and I just, I was so sad and my husband will definitely vouch for that. That was week five for me pretty much and the cramping continued into week five but it got a little bit better. Many other symptoms honestly, like I was tired so I would nap, you know, pretty often but I was able to do a lot of things in week five. I did a lot of redoing my front entrance, fully fine and I was like, great, if pregnancy, is, this pregnancy is gonna be like, like this and that's great. I was also like, oh my God, this pregnancy is gonna be like this. That means like something's wrong because I have no pregnancy symptoms. But don't you worry, cause the day I turned six weeks, like literally the night, like it was like midnight and maybe I set myself up psychologically but I haven't had nausea or vomiting in both of my past pregnancy. I was in the hospital 12 times. That's a story for another time. So it wasn't an easy pregnancy by any means, but I was never nauseous. I had plenty of food aversions. I did not like a lot of foods and I craved a lot of foods, 
but I never was nauseous and I never threw up. And so I was very surprised when come week six, I was super nauseous. I ran to the bathroom. I remember going at like midnight six. I was just nauseous all the time. I woke up in the morning and I would feel nauseous. I wasn't throwing up. But I was just like, it felt like my stomach was just so queasy and uneasy. And I guess like, I feel like if I had ever been seasick or like I've gotten queasy from like moving vehicles, like maybe like roller coasters, then that's probably what it would feel like. I felt icky, I was able to eat whatever I wanted to eat. I really wanted fruit. That's kind of always been my thing in all of my pregnancies. At the beginning, I just want fruit. I just want fresh fruit. And if in this pregnancy, I really wanted sour fruit, so like blackberries or apples or grapes or things like that. Just things that are nice and sour because they felt better. And I also started drinking ginger ale when I got nauseous. So I haven't had soda in like six to eight months. And nausea got worse by week seven. It was worse, but maybe I'll finish week six first. So in week five and six, I started having crazy, crazy dreams. And if you guys haven't seen it yet, I will link here a video. It's called Weird Pregnancy Symptoms That Nobody Tells You About. And so for my first two pregnancies, I had a lot of weird, weird pregnancy symptoms. And Crazy Dreams is one of them that I feel like a lot of people don't really talk about, but it is very real. I had like these strangest dreams of like just being on football fields and running away from people and being in mansions and just like everything you can think of. My husband is literally like, don't tell me about your dreams when you're pregnant because they're just too crazy for me. They are why. Week seven, I was basically not able to do anything. I was just, I mean, my husband from pretty much when I found out I was pregnant has been amazing. He works full time, but he does work from home and that's super helpful. His days off, he cooks a bunch of meals and he makes sure that the house is clean and all the laundry is done. So literally all I have to do during the week is watch my kids, which is a mission in itself, trust me. But it's really nice that he's been doing all of that. He was just lying down all day, just super sick. I homeschool my child. We were doing it on the couch together, but a lot of times I would like have to tell them to wait and go to the bathroom and like drive and just not feel well. And my husband was like, honestly, like I think you need to go see a doctor. I'm with a midwife and my first appointment is not until 11 weeks. I know there's medication you take. I've had friends who take medication in Canada. It's called Deglectin. And I'm pretty sure in America it's called Deglexis or something. And a lot of people also take a combination of Unisem and B6. And I think they're all kind of the same thing. About halfway through week seven, I was like, you know what, I'm going to do it. I actually called my pharmacy here and because of COVID, the pharmacy I think has a little more uh, of an ability to prescribe things. I started taking it and it helped. For a lot of people I saw that it was just like some magical solution and they suddenly felt like great. I didn't, I was still super nauseous. I would say like probably 30% better. And so I still take it because I think that 30% better is better than 0% better. How many times did it just say the word better? Week eight, my nausea got worse. I felt like, I felt like it didn't really get better, but they do say that eight weeks is kind of the peak of what you're getting. And all of my cramping went away by week seven and all of my back pain went away. So really the only thing I was dealing with was that crazy nausea. And I wasn't having food aversions or anything like that. And I was just really tired. I could sleep for like 10 hours and wake up tired. But I have two little kids and I feel like if you have kids, you know that you're kind of just perpetually tired. And my kids are great sleepers. So like, don't get me wrong. I'm not like, oh, I'm waking up all the time with them. But they just take so much of your energy. And my kids don't go to school or daycare. So they are with me pretty much all the time. But I have to uh, tell you guys that in my previous pregnancies, I told everyone right away pretty much that I was pregnant. I told, I found out at like four or five weeks pregnant and I told everyone by seven weeks that I was pregnant. And so I didn't have to hide anything from every, anyone. But this time I wanted to keep it to myself. Different decision for me. My husband was very supportive because he was like, it's, it's your body, it's your baby, I'm not gonna tell people if you don't want to. I'm excited for people to know. I haven't told my mom yet, and so I'm really excited to tell my mom. That's pretty much it, I think. I haven't seen the baby yet, which is really weird. And for me, it just like helps cement that there's actually a baby in there, and I told my four-year-old right away. 
He's my little best friend and I have to tell him everything. So this will be my third August baby, but this baby is a late August baby and not an early August baby like my other two. So I think that's it for today. I think I've talked for long enough. Hope you guys have enjoyed it. If you haven't subscribed already, then please subscribe. I plan on uploading a pregnancy update every week from week 12 onwards. So this is four to eight weeks and then I'll probably do an eight to 12 week. And then once that's done, the update every week and probably other pregnancy videos too and other motherhood videos. See you guys in my next video. Bye!